Okay. Uh, welcome to Chicory, creating a language native WASM runtime. So, a little bit about us to start. Um, my name is Ben. I'm the co founder, CTO of Dilipso. Uh, here is Andrea. He's a uh, principal engineer at Red Hat. And uh, yeah, I live in New Orleans, Louisiana. He lives in Lisbon, Portugal. And for the past like six months or so, we've been just kind of collaborating. Uh, online over the Atlantic Ocean on this, on our free time, and uh, finally got to meet Andrea for the first time, first time meeting him, first time doing this talk together. So uh, also he snuck some slides in here to surprise <laughs> me, which I don't know about, so it's going to be fun. Uh, so, to keep you uh, awake. Yeah, keep everyone awake. Um, yeah, so let's get, let's get into it. So um, first off, why are we talking about the JVM at a WASM conference, you might be asking yourself. Well, I would uh, basically counter the argument, why are we not talking about it? Um, it's actually kind of weird how little we talk about the JVM. Like I, you know, have heard in a few of the talks, it's definitely mentioned. Certainly you hear right once, run anywhere, hear a few jokes and stuff. And uh, certainly there's a lot of, you know, issues with the JVM, but, you know, the JVM was created uh, with the same goals as WASM in mind, really, if you go look at, look and understand its history, but it has a 30 year head start. So they probably know some things that we need to know. Um, and uh, yeah, there, you know, there were previous talks that have kind of mentioned this idea of like learning from others and uh, you know, especially the JVM, the people who are working on that. So I would just say like, if you're kind of skeptical about the JVM or you, know, you have sort of certain ideas about it, I think if you're working on WASM at all, you should take the time to go understand it, study it and use it, even just using it and kind of experiencing what it's like to use like a mature um, virtual machine like that is enough, but also studying it is good too, and it's not that complicated. Um, yeah, so uh, second, uh, really, which is most important to this project and, and why we're talking about the JVM here is really just the mountain of value that's been created by the JVM. So I want you guys to just like stop for a second and just think and reflect on how deeply the JVM has embedded itself into the modern economy. Yes, thank you. Just meditate on that. Uh, so again, there's 30 years of JVM software in the world creating conservatively like hundreds of billions of dollars of value nearly across all business verticals. Like you might even say it's trillions of dollars. I, I mean, I don't know, but that's reasonable. Um, and just like think about all the massive public companies that are just exclusively powered by the JVM. Think about ecosystems like Android, billions of devices all across the world, all powered by the JVM. So, you know, it's huge, right? So uh, yeah, this must this is not Wasm <laughs> Enterprise Edition. This we must be an Andrea plant. Uh, we're not wa announcing Wasm EE here. Unless you want to give us a big contract, then we will sign it. Uh, yeah, so what I wanted to talk about was... Uh, okay, right. So, all right. So, yeah, we have 30 years of software. Great. So why are we talking about the past, right? Why, why do we care about this 30 years of software? So... Um, this talk is largely about embedding WASM into the JVM, but should we be focused on compiling all this JVM code to WASM instead? Uh, well, I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, we believe like the reason, uh, the most compelling reason to use WASM is that it can unlock the full value of your applications by making them programmable platforms. So um, we think like in the future, uh, having a WASM interface will become the norm for integrations because WASM will help us scale the complexity of integrations by facilitating multiple orders of magnitude, more integration, uh, more interactions than an HTTP API can. So the basic idea is like the more interactions you can do between two integrators, the more features you can extend and customize, the more things you can do, it can unlock more value, more customization. And this is why we think, you know, embedding WASM into the JVM is an important path forward. We can't just leave behind all the stuff that we've done. And uh, there's still lots of you know, JVM software to write in the future as well. So uh, how do we execute WASM in the JVM today? Well, there are a number of really good mature WASM runtimes, like WASM time, WASM are really great runtimes. Uh, the only issue is these are written in languages like C, C++, Rust, and they're distributed as native code, which has some pros and cons. So the main downsides here are there's two things, really. Um, distribution. So if you're linking to a native object in the JVM, you have to um, ship that thing off with your application or your library, right? So one of the main reasons you use the JVM is you compile to a platform-independent bytecode. That's kind of the point. 
And then now you have like this whole triple of like, you know, dimensional problem of compiling for every, you know, OS and architecture and libc that you need to ship this thing. Um, the other side is on the runtime, right? So uh, to communicate with some shared object on most systems, you need to use some kind of foreign function interface. And in Java, there's a few different like, kind of names for that, but it's roughly the same. And there's a lot of complexity and, and problems um, when, you, when your execution leaves the safety and observability of the JVM. So let's talk a little bit about um, some specifics about what that is. Uh, so, you know, if you stay within the JVM boundaries, then you get guaranteed memory safety, which is, uh, you know, they've been doing it for a long time. It's a pretty, pretty good guarantee. Um, you get fault isolation. Uh, there's no, if your, WASM per, if your WASM program is like JVM bytecode, then it can't crash the JVM, which is a kind of a major problem for a lot of applications. Uh, you get like a super advanced JIT, right? So you can imagine when you use FFI, the, uh, the JIT uh, from the JVM just sees the program as a bunch of holes, right? It's just going in and out. Um, but what if it was just all one kind of stream of, of JVM bytecode? Um, and there's lots of really good reasons why you want to stay within the boundaries of the JVM. Uh, yeah, so, so what do we do about that? This is another Andrea slide, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I, I assume is, I assume what he's saying is we put the VM in the VM, right? Yes. Okay, gotcha. That was the intention. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we put a VM in a VM. Um, yeah, so the non-joke slide uh, is uh, this idea we're, we're kind of trying to coin uh, called a language-native runtime. Um, so we don't really expect like this, this type of runtime to like replace uh, the state-of-the-art runtimes, but rather to kind of fill in the gaps and maximize the portability, um, as well as provide like a better developer experience. So a good analogy that we've kind of thought of is like, might be the difference between say an F1 car or in like an off-road vehicle or a Jeep or something where your F1 car, you're gonna get the fastest, uh, the best performance, you're gonna have the best technology. The cons are it's you know, not gonna be able to run in many places. If it breaks even a little bit, you are, you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, whereas the Jeep, you know, it's very portable, it's simple technology, obviously not gonna be the fastest, but it's gonna get you into a lot of different terrain. And I could even see a way, you know, something we do in Xtism is switching out the runtime where you need it, right? So it's like, if I'm more kind of hostile environment, I might use Chicory. If I'm more in a known performant environment, I might drop to some more performant runtime. So we're not the first people to do this. Um, we we kind of consider ourselves spiritual cousins to Wazero, because they probably were the first, I think one of the first uh, runtimes that kind of pioneered this idea. Um, and credit to Eduardo for this incredible piece of piece of art that should be in the Louvre, honestly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so although Go and Java are very different, you know, like Go compiles to native binaries, um, Java is this whole managed like runtime, they actually have very similar problems in, in terms of like uh, having to reach out to native code. Um, so these two projects like kind of have a, a, sim a similar spiritual, spiritual kind of like connection. Um, and I also think that like this is probably not a problem unique to these languages as well. I could probably like enumerate a few others, but you know you could probably imagine like when you have a language with a pretty strong runtime or uh, managed runtime, then you might have some of these problems where once the execution or memory allocation escapes that, there can be problems. So uh, we're going to introduce Tickery. Andrea is going to come in and talk about uh, everything we've done and some of the technical stuff. Thanks, Ben. So it's a pleasure, and today we are introducing our project, which is Chicory. You can find it in GitHub under uh, Ben's uh, organization, Dilipso. So please come, check it out, uh, submit issues, uh, join our Zlib channel. Uh, we love to welcome you into the project, so please come and check it out. Um, so what happened? Uh, 
this is actually a really, really quick journey because I realized that it was just six months that I was collaborating with Ben, and this, is, this was a side project for both of us. And uh, so uh, what we have been able to, do, to realize in six months and the fact that we are here today is actually really exciting for me, and it was a, a really extremely great journey. Um, Eduardo from uh, Wazero introduced <laughs> us because he went from uh, our common employee, our former common employee for him, uh, read that and uh, went to work on Wazero. And uh, with Ben, we actually envisioned uh, running WASM workloads on top of the JVM, writing a Java native runtime. So uh, we really wanted to, to see both kind of applications being enabled on the JVM because it's something that was completely lacking at them uh, or uh, it was doable, it is doable, but, but with constraints and problems. And to make it possible in six months, we concentrated every hour of our energy on delivering demos and POCs on the happy path, so on, on uh, integrating and developing the, uh, um, the uh, how, to, how to perform the instructions written in WASM for uh, running programs, actually. So, um, Building a language native runtime. <coughs> Those are a couple, of, uh, a couple of notes that we have, because we are not the first, but we are following Wazero, of course. And there are a bunch of things that you can do to uh, make it easier to, uh, to write a language native runtime in, in your preferred language, actually. So even outside of Go or the JVM. And the first thing that we did was to generate code for the opcodes, so keeping them in a TSV format, which is very portable and very readable across different languages. We keep a WASM corpus, so programs written, uh, written in different languages and in WASM as well, and compiled to WASM in a folder so that we know that we won't have regression over those programs because we will run them on top of chicory on, uh, during the tests. And we are super heavily using native uh, uh, tools like Maven plugins for automating the wall of it. Um, and in the Maven plugins, what we are doing the most is running code generators. So we have only 13,000 lines of code committed to GitHub, but at the end of the day, when you run the tests on your machine, you have over 250 thousand line of code for, uh, that are just generated tests from the test suite. And this is actually a really powerful thing that we discovered and that sped up, uh, that speed up the development of the language native runtime. Um, those are the steps that you would need to follow if you really want to, to, to go down this path and, and integrate uh, the test suite in, uh, um, for writing, uh, for writing the, uh, the runtime. So first of all, there is a TCK for WebAssembly, which is the WebAssembly test suite. You have to download it. Uh, the WebAssembly test suite is re uh, uh, contains a number of WAST files. Those WAST files are basically an extended representation of um, the text format of WASM. And since we don't have a text parser, just yet, but we have just a WASM binary parser. Uh, what we have to do is to download external tools like WAST to JSON to transform those WAST, uh, WAST files into something that we can read and generate code out of them. Uh, so we download WAST to JSON as well. We run WAST to JSON on, to on top of the WAST files. This generates a folder which contains the WASM modules in the binary format and a JSON file that represents basically the assertions and the operations that you want to do against the compiled, the compiled ones files. And, that, and uh, just parsing the JSON and treating it as an AST and generating assertions out of it is the way to go for us for generating JUnit code so that we can actually really use a debugger for debugging each and every instruction and each and every assertion uh, coming from the test suite. So, uh, next, I really want to speak about the use cases for this technology because 
<laughs> they were really, really, really unexpected even for us. Uh, I, mentioned <laughs> I, I mentioned that I work for Red Hat, so I sent an internal email to other colleagues uh, saying that I was starting and collaborating on this project, and this was actually cool because um, people from the JRuby team reached out and said, oh, we have a problem for you. And I was like, uh, are you sure? <laughs> 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 and <laughs> this was really interesting, but, but, uh, but it makes a lot of sense. I know you are tired, but bear with me and it makes sense. So um, uh, Ruby is an extremely difficult program to, uh, uh, language to parse because its syntax is super, super complicated and it enables you to do a lot of stuff, but it's super complicated to parse. So what they are doing is re-implement uh, uh, a Ruby parser in pure C so that it will be the foundation and the official parser for all of the Ruby implementations from now on. And that's why Prism born. And then we have JRuby, which is Ruby on the JVM, as you might expect. But Ruby is a very, very, very C community. So most of the things that they are doing after the interface that you see uh, in Ruby, uh, they are actually implemented in C. So you need to ship and execute uh, native libraries for running the code that, that, that is actually there. And in JRuby, they always had this problem that they share with the rest of the uh, Ruby implementation, but they really didn't want it to have because one of the obvious advantages of running Ruby on the JVM should be that you don't have native dependencies. Again, back to the initial point. And they, they can't really bootstrap because even the parser, just trying to parse a Ruby program, needs an external library. And this is a problem for them because they need to know your architecture and this is not portable. And then you have to cr cross compile your application for different architecture. And uh, if it is like a new ARM, maybe it's not supported yet by the parser, by, by, by the library, and you have to recompile your library and so on and so forth. And actually, Prism can be compiled to WASM code. And it is already running in JavaScript, for example, for uh, showing the AST of R Ruby programs. And what we did was to take this compilation target for Prism and make it run into Chicory. So you just download a dependency, which is super lightweight and which is super, uh, super, uh, super easy to import, and that's just plain Java bytecode that you will be able to execute on any JVM without downloading nothing that is specific to the machine you are executing on. Basically, what we are solving is the bootstrapping problem. So people won't have to download any external dependency, any additional stuff to actually run any, uh, any, any uh, JRuby program on top of the JVM to bootstrap the environment. We are slow, we are slower, yes, <laughs> much slower, but still this works and this enables more use cases. Now, let's uh, move to more interesting uh, use cases. And I want to elaborate on this one uh, because when I got hired in Red Hat, I actually I was uh, part of the Keyclock team. And uh, Keyclock is a very popular identity management software. It enables you to do single sign-on, basically, and all those kind of operations. But what you don't know is that this is like spaghetti code all the way down, and it is made for, integra for, for integrating any kind of legacy system. You can, you, can, you can have Active Directory on one side, LDAP, and then Kerberos and things like that. You don't, I know that you want to rewrite things in Rust, but you don't want to rewrite <laughs> those integration in Rust. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, all the, uh, um, this is the power actually for, of Java. Uh, those enterprise application, you can't really get rid of them easily in any way. So you want to actually uh, empower them and enjoy uh, their usage 
on, uh, in, uh, in different ways. And maybe what you don't want to do is to write a Java plugin because you really need to do something custom in Keyclock. And in Keyclock, what they have is what you expect. So if you want to match, for example, and check the identity of a user against, uh, uh, against the different providers or to verify his identity, inserting some custom rules for your business, what you have to do at the moment is, as I, said, as I told you, to write a Java plugin. But why? There is no real reason. And now we're just importing a library and it took me like two hours to do an initial, a very initial uh, proof, of uh, proof of concept. So just importing a JVM libraries, you will be able to, uh, to write your plugins in any language that compiles to WASM, like Rust, C, Go, or Java, uh, JavaScript, or whatever. And this basically makes those applications, which are enterprise and heavy, et cetera, easily extensible with a system which is really, really lightweight for the project itself. Because for them, means just importing a library and making it you able to, to, to run, to load a file and to, uh, to load a was, uh, some WASM code in it. And this is super useful. So basically, there are a lot of more use cases that we have exploited with uh, various levels of POCs. Um, but making uh, this extension mechanism are, is making you able to scale the extensibility and the complexity of your applications. So Apache Camel is a very, very popular integration framework. They, uh, they enable the producer for producing and transforming data into, an, uh, into the integration that they are doing. Um, with WASM. It was extremely easy, it is extremely useful because normally what you do is again customize with Java and this is enterprise software that can be sold and supported by big companies. But now you have even a WASM module so you will be able to run Rust code there and uh, uh, C code or Go whatever to just do your integrations without touching the Java part of it. Uh, Kafka, uh, I know that you heard about it. You, with Kafka Connected, you can perform transformations, and with Croxid Issues is a proxy to Kafka, and you will be able to do filters. So you ingest messages coming, from, uh, coming on a topic, and you can transform them and uh, perform some operations like encoding, decoding, encrypting, and whatever on top of, uh, or routing even, on, uh, uh, with a proxy. Pulsar, another very, very well-known Java, pro uh, Java project, uh, which is a, a message queue that is used all around. So, um, Last but not least, I want to talk about our roadmap. So uh, it's just six months. The project is still really early, and it's still uh, a lot of fun to, to, to join and to program on it. On it. So well, first of all, we want to make all the tests green with the interpreter of the test suite. For now, we have excluded the SIMD support because we don't have capacity for, for tackling even it, and it will require Java 21 with a vector API. So a few more ad ad additional complications will be down the road, but this will be the first goal. But we are already mostly there, like uh, more than 90% of the tests are already passing, so there are just a few bits to be uh, fixed at the end. We want to implement the validation logic. We cannot claim to have a secure runtime, a secure and sandbox of the runtime until we implement the validation part of the WebAssembly specification. And unfortunately, to just enable the first use cases and to, to make it real to run something <laughs> on top of uh, Chicory, we just skipped this part so far, and we are starting to, to implement all those validations logic that will be throwing exceptions all around in the code base. And yes, we want some uh, WASI preview and support because we want to be able to, to perform easily operations, for example, on files, because this is a very, very common use case that we have had so far. And at the end of this journey, we, we can claim we have a runtime that will be able to safely run your programs and that <laughs> conform to the specification, and we want to tackle some performance improvements. We are sure that there will be a lot of low-hanging fruit and a lot of other things that we can do 
even if it is just an interpreter, uh, to improve performance over the current uh, over, over over the current code base. And last but most exciting that we want to get to is an IoT compiler. So uh, we just started with an interpreter to have a solid base and a solid understanding of a WebAssembly specification. It's a journey as, uh, for us as well into learning and understanding each and every detail of a WebAssembly specification. As soon as we are done with an interpreter and it will uh, deliver, uh, we can actually we will be able to actually translate WASM, uh, WASM code directly to Java bytecode, and we do expect to make this fast, or that's our desired goal. So just to show you that uh, I'm I'm not. I'm not doing something, I'm not claiming something that is not real. This is, for example, running uh, Lama2.c. So Lama2.c, you have seen in a, a, couple, a, a couple of talks before uh, this one, that is inference, etc. This is running on pure CPU, so it's extremely slow. You can see that it will take time to get something out, but yes, it's working, it's running in the ground. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this shows that, that there are actual real workloads that can be run. Uh, probably we should improve over them, but yes, there is something and is moving. And uh, very last but not least, I want to thanks all the contributors because we are lucky enough to have a, a lot of uh, great colleagues and people uh, contributing to this code base. And I really want to encourage you to come and join this community of amazing people in this early project that we are enjoying a lot to develop and to bring to you. <laughs> Yes, I think we have four minutes for questions. Uh, <coughs> Hats off for Real JS. It's the first Real JS presentation that I've seen. Um, weirdly, also great T-shirt, and <laughs> that's why I'm going to ask you this question: um, How do? What's the overlap, and how do you compare the work that you're doing to? I think the GraalVM WASM support that they have. Yep. That I know is a, I don't know very much about. No, 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 no. Uh, in GraalVM, they, they, uh, what they built is basically an, uh, a just-in-time compiler for any platform with Truffle, which is which is an API for letting you write an interpreter for any language. And in particular, they have an interpreter for WASM, which is called Truffle WASM that runs on the GraalVM. Um, Recently, just recently, they made this available on any JVM. So this is portable, actually, even. Uh, it was not the case a few months ago. Uh, but now you can port it around with some penalty on performances, etc. But you can port it around. So kind, kind of the goals are similar. But you have to bring with you an entire just-in-time compiler. <laughs> and we are <laughs> aiming for simplicity and to keep the dependency really with a, uh, as little code as we can and make it light and easily portable to any JVM. So um, kind of same goal, kind of same way of execution, different, different trade-offs mm -hmm. in the implementations, I would say. So, so I, I think you just an you answered my question. It's also going to be a flat truffle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate it.